Hey guys, welcome to the Summit Heights Fellowship broadcast. My name is Edward Crouch and I'm the lead pastor here at Summit Heights. And before we get to our broadcast, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us. If you have a few minutes today, check out our website, summitheightsfellowship.com. And you'll learn all about our church. We have a great student ministry, an incredible children's ministry, preschool ministry. And we do small groups all over our community from Mineola to Quitman to Winsboro, Hawkins, even in Big Sandy. We would love to have you check us out one Sunday. If there's anything we could ever do for you, please take a few minutes, go to our website, fill out that prayer card on our website, and we would love to pray for you, reach out to you, or minister to you in any way we can. Again, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the broadcast. If there's any decisions or questions you have at the end of our broadcast, please reach out to us at our number on the screen or on our website. We would love to visit with you. Have a great day. Enjoy the broadcast. Amen. Good morning, Summit. Today, I really want to encourage you today. Uh, it's been on my heart all week long, and uh, I told you a couple weeks ago when I uh, came back uh, from sabbatical, you know, I left on March the 1st and uh, came home and the world fell apart. And we've laughed about that and we thought about that over and over again. And, and yet I want to remind you of this because I've had to remind myself of this all week long is that this really nothing has changed. Really nothing has changed. In fact, we know today as much about the future as we knew in March about the future. We knew just, we were just as dependent upon God in the first week of March than we are right now. And so here's the reality. Really nothing has changed, but everything has changed, hadn't it? Everything is, and I don't want to make a lot of that, but see, I know some of you have lost your jobs, and some of you are struggling to put food on the table, and some of you guys are struggling in your marriage. You've never spent this much time together, and, and so you're struggling in that, and depression, and, and all these things that are going on financially, and addiction, that culture has changed. But here's what I want to say to you this morning. God has not changed, and I want to encourage you with that this morning. I've had to remind myself of that over and over again. In fact, in the news recently, I've, I've heard this, and, and a couple of weeks ago when it was first said that we are at war, that we have a wartime president, that, that we're fighting an invisible enemy, that we're in a fight of our lives, and I was thinking about all those things that were said, and I was thinking about just, just all these things that were really happening, and again, really, nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. Because listen up, I want you to hear this. We as believers, we as believers have always been in a fight against an enemy. Did you know that? We've always been in a fight. We've always been in this together. And we're not just singled out alone because we're in this together, all of us as believers. We have an enemy that wants to destroy us. And newsflash, it's not the COVID-19. It's much more sinister than that. It's much more deadly than that because it's your soul that's at stake. And this has been an eternity that we've been on this. You see, it's personal. The battle we're in is personal. It goes back to eternity past between heavenly forces for the soul of mankind, for the throne of God. You see, for you and me, well, let me, let me rephrase that because you, let me just say Edward. Because for me, the battle is not a physical battle so much as it is a battle of the mind. It's the battle of the mind. It's those things that are in my heart and in my mind. And, and the battle of the mind is, I believe, one of the most crucial of all battles for the Christian because our mind can be a brutal playground, can it? I know some of you are struggling. That back alley of your mind, that, that deserted field, it's a dangerous neighborhood, your mind. Amen? I'm telling you, that's why some of you are struggling with addiction right now. You're struggling with depression right now. You are scared to death right now because your mind is being bombarded. You've experienced the mind games even just this last week with fear and isolation, and depression, elation, overreacting, and mad, underreacting, and mad, right? 
not reacting. Are you even awake? I mean, his mind's where the battle is. You know, it's interesting that everything the Lord's led me to is the disciples and the religious response when Jesus was going to the cross and, and when Jesus was doing his ministry. And one of the things we've talked about over the last couple of weeks is that Jesus just never really did what they wanted him to do. He didn't perform the way they thought he should perform. They, he didn't respond the way he, they thought he should respond. And I found myself in that position last Monday. Y'all remember what happened last Sunday night here in Hawkins, America? Those 100-mile-an-hour winds that came through, knocked out our electricity. You remember that? I, and so uh, the electricity's out. I get up the next morning. I'm sitting in my garage looking at all the debris, and I'm thinking I really ought to go clean that up. And I'd really determined in my mind I wasn't going to go clean it up until my neighbor came out and started cleaning his yard, and then the neighbor across the street started cleaning his yard, and, and then the guy down the street started cleaning his yard, and so I gave in to peer pressure and started cleaning up my yard, and, and so I get out there, and I got my back plat bore on, and, and that thing stops working on me right in the middle, so then I had to sweep everything up, didn't have electricity, and so I'm thinking, this 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 just the first world issues, of course, and, and I'm thinking, this is terrible, man, and so I get all that done, and I sit down, and my phone goes dead, then my hearing aids go dead. Dead. Then my iPad goes dead. I got an electric stove. I got a microwave. I can't cook anything. So now I'm fasting and I'm standing in the middle of my garage going, Oh Lord, please let the lights come on. Lord. And I just kept going over and over again. I'd sit down in my chair and I said, Lord, just. God, we need electricity, first world issues. God, we need electricity. And, I just, and I'd even amp it up a little bit, you know, because that sometimes helps. I don't know. And, and, I, and it seemed like he wouldn't do what I wanted him to do. Now, he finally turned it back on like 48 hours later, but it didn't do it on my time. And can I just be honest with you? I was mad. I just had enough. I moved from kind of being okay because I'm pretty good alone to just, I was mad. Because God wasn't doing what I wanted him to do. And sometimes when I do that, I begin to ask these questions. Maybe, maybe God loves somebody else more than me. You ever thought about that? Because he didn't act like you wanted him to act? Is it because I've done something wrong? Maybe I prayed wrong. Maybe I didn't use the right name. Because some people will tell you you got to use the right name. Is it because God was taking a nap? Was, did, did, did I not serve enough? Did, did, did I not deserve God to answer my prayers this week? It's because I lack faith. And, and yet we sit there and we think about all those questions, and they may be stupid questions, but they're still questions, aren't they? And we get to that point where our mind is just going crazy. And so it, it, I want to say this to you this morning again. We are in a battle. And we've always been in a battle, and it's not the COVID-19. It's bigger than a virus. It's bigger than a virus. In fact, the Scripture is clear on this. We're in a wartime. We're not in peacetime. We're not in a time. We've been at war since the very beginning of eternity. That the, the moment we surrendered our lives to Christ as Christians, we actually entered into a war, and it was more intense than it was before, that we are in a war. And I don't have time to teach through all of these, but Hebrews 12, verse 4 says, we are at war against sin. 1 Peter 2, 11 says that there's a war raging within our souls. And Jude 3 talks about the struggle of faith, that this mind game that goes on and the struggling that's going on. In fact, in the very next book, in that letter Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy, he says, hey, hey, Timothy, we are soldiers. You hear all this language he's talking about. That second letter he wrote to the Corinthians, two times Paul talks about that we have weapons. If we're going to be in battle, we're going to have weapons. And so this whole reality that every one of us that's listening this morning that we are involved in a war. This is a spiritual war. And if you get this, you recognize this, you realize this, you see, we're involved in a spiritual war, whether you're at home, which most of us are at home now for a while, whether you're at work, whether you're on your campus, when you go back to your campus, if you're a student, whether you're alone with others, there's a battle raging. And you may be listening this morning, you go, ha, I'm not even a believer. I'm not a Christian, so that doesn't apply to me. Can I just be honest with you? It does apply to you. Absolutely, it applies to you. And listen to me this morning. There's a spiritual battle raging for your soul at this moment. and has been. And if you were to be honest, you know there's a battle for your soul. Because you know the darkness. 
and you know the evil, and you know there's a pull for you if you were honest. And I know some of you won't be honest, but there's something in you right now that you know there's a darkness that's there. So absolutely it applies to you. As it to all of us that we're involved in a spiritual war and the enemy in this war is formidable. And here's the bottom line. The enemy of our souls wants to defame God's glory distort the good news. He does not want you to know the gospel. He does not want you to know the good news of Jesus. And he wants to destroy God's people and people in general because we are a creation of God. And so the enemy, he he doesn't care if you don't follow or follow. He just wants to destroy you. And we feel that. In fact, Ephesians 6, 10 through 12 may be the clearest that we know about a war that Paul wrote in Ephesians 6, he says a final word. And I love the final word because, you know, there's two ways to look at that. There's a final word. In other words, this is it. This is where we stand. I don't think that's where Paul was going here, but yet I think we could say that. This is pretty final what he's talking about. He's just wrapping up a letter to the church of Ephesians. And he says this, a final word. Listen to this. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting. Notice we're in a fight. He's writing to the church. He's talking about a fight. There's nothing new here, folks. Yeah, nothing has changed, but everything has changed. We're in a battle. We've always been in a fight. But who are we fighting? He says, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, he says, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Listen, we're in a battle. And the second thing I would tell you is we have an enemy, and he is formidable. In fact, he's called the enemy of darkness, the accuser, and he's accused some of you, and you've believed his lies this week. He is the angel of light. He is the dragon, the slanderer, the murderer, the liar, the deceiver, the prince of the world and of the air, the destroyer, the tempter, the evil one, the god of this age. He is the author of sin. He's vicious, he's cruel, and he's impure. And our enemy is known in the scripture as Satan, the devil. And he's alive and well, and he's still at work. And you know what his favorite part of the day is for us? as believers, his favorite part of the day is anytime he can keep us from spending time alone in God's word. Anytime he can keep us away from God's word because he knows the power of God's word. He believes, you don't believe, but he believes in the power of God. And yet some of you believe in him, but you don't believe in God. I'm telling you, listen to me. That's why Jesus came because we have an enemy that wants to keep you from knowing the good news. Jesus. That's why he died on the cross. And if you'll just believe in his name, you'll be saved. You see, the enemy is crafty. He knows your weakness. I used to say to students years ago when when I was a student pastor, it's kind of come home over the last couple of weeks since we've been homeschooling because now our kids don't have homework, but yet they have homework because we're home all the time, right? And so I was thinking about this this last week. The whole point of homework is that you study for a test. And, and, and if you go into battle, then you want to study your enemy and the tactics so you know how to front your enemy. Well, here's what I know about the enemy, and you need to hear this. The enemy has done his homework on you. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your addictions. He knows your pleasure points. He knows your pain points. He knows all the things about you. He's done his homework on you. And because he knows mankind and our weaknesses, he's probing us. During this time, I sure don't want to give him credit for everything that's happened over the last month, but I'm telling you right now, he's probing this right now to distract some of you, probing your pride, probing your pleasure, probing your shame and your guilt and your fear, and he's done his homework on you, and that's why some of us have forgotten that we are in a battle and that God's in the middle of this with us because we're believing his lies. I think that's why Peter said in 1 Peter 5, 8, he said, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. See, Peter's saying, look, wake up. This isn't new. 
We've, we're in a battle, but it's not against flesh and blood. It's not against a virus. It's for our souls, man. Which brings me to my next thought. We're in a battle. We have an enemy. But number three, we need a defense plan, don't we? And aren't you glad we have it? Because God's already provided it for us. Look at Ephesians 6.13. He lined it out clearly. He says, therefore, put on. Everybody say, put on. Put on every piece of God's armor. Hello. So you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Listen, if you're going to survive, not, not if we're going to win, because we already win. We win in the end. I'll talk about that in a minute, okay? It, it's, it's irreversible. We win, all right? If we're going to win, we're going to survive. We've already been provided the guarantee and the plan of victory. It's irreversible. The only factor we're working with here is simple. You ready for this? Obedience. The only factor we're working with right now is obedience. Are we going to be obedient to what God has given us? Are we willing to take what's being offered for the battle we're in? Listen, some of you are not going to survive because you think you know better. You think you have a better way because what you're doing to medicate right now is working for you until it doesn't. And so it, some of you are not going to survive because of your pride. Some of you are not going to survive because of your pleasure. You're so attached to the things uh, that bring you pleasure and security and your safety blanket that one day when it's gone, then what are you going to do? Some of you won't survive because of the shame and the guilt and the lies you're believing from the enemy. Listen, your neighborhood of your mind, man, is where the enemy works. And what Paul is laying out for us here is that, look, man, we're in a battle. So take what God has given you in the warfare, put it on so that you may stand. You see, some of you won't survive because of fear, because that lion, that, 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 that lion, the enemy is going around roaring at you and you are paralyzed like a little rabbit in the middle of a field and you can't move because all you're listening to is the roar of the enemy. You see, some of you are not gonna survive simply because you're not going to take what Paul says, what God's already given us, and you're listening to the lies of the enemy. Look at this. You see, the fourth thing I would tell you is we're in a battle. We have an enemy um, that we had a plan. And number four, we have the power of God. Look at this. I love this. Ephesians 6, 13. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. And I love this next sentence. It says, then after the battle... Do you hear that? After the battle, you will be standing firm. Do you hear that? We win. Isn't that good? It doesn't matter what comes down. Give us the COVID. Give us, it, it does not matter. We win after the battle. If we're obedient to take what God's given us, then listen, when the battle's done, we win. This is good stuff, man. And we'll be standing firm, solid, not fearful, not frozen, but firm. I love what 2 Corinthians 10, where Paul's talking about, hey, 10 verses 3 and 4, we do live in the world. We do. And that's what I said. Listen, nothing's changed, but everything's changed. We live in the world, but we don't fight the same way that the world fights. We fight with weapons that are different from those the world uses. Our weapons, you ready for this? Our weapons, don't miss this. Our weapons, this is good. Our weapons have power from God <laughs> that can destroy the enemy's strong places. I hear people tell me all the time, especially pastors, I meet with pastors. That's, that's kind of what I do during the week and, and sitting meeting with pastors trying to figure out where we are. I'll hear pastors say every once in a while, and good church people and the super spiritual people sometimes say, all we need is just a little more power. And I understand what they're saying. I mean, I get it. I, I, I get that. But, but listen to me. As we've learned over the last couple of weeks and on Resurrection Sunday, for those of us who have believed in and surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, now listen to this. This is, this is stout. That we have inside of us the fullness of the power of Jesus Christ that raised him from the dead. We have the fullness of the power of Jesus Christ living in us that raised him from the dead. I would say that's a pretty significant starting point, wouldn't you? That's pretty dadgum powerful. Can I say it that way? 
Did you know in 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4 that his divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness? By these, he has given us a very great and precious promises so that through them you may share in the divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in the world because of evil desires. Gosh, this is so good. What do we have to fear if the living Lord Jesus that rose him, raised him from the dead, what do we have to fear? <laughs> Man, this is good. I don't care if you're enjoying it or not. I'm telling you, I'm loving it. And get this, this, this is good because not only does he live in us, He's also the king that's coming back. Come on. See, we fight the fight of faith with our eyes fixed on the sky. Paul says, I fix my eyes on the horizon, man. Why? I fix my eyes on the horizon because I'm longing for the day that he comes back. Somebody asked me again this last week, Edward, do you believe this is the end times? So let me answer it one more time as clearly as I can. Yes, we are living in end times. And yes, he is coming back. Did you know that every generation since Jesus ascended to heaven thought they were living in end times? We are in the end times, man. Come on. He's coming back. I don't know when. I don't know if it's my lifetime, but I'm not going to sit around and be scared wondering when he's coming back because he's put me on mission, man. He's put me on mission. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I've always done. I'm not going to be anxious about anything, but I'm going to cry out to God because I know he's coming back and he's got this. And so I'm going to flee evil. I'm going to pursue goodness. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to know him. And I'm going to anticipate the day he returns. Amen? That's the truth, man. We don't need to be afraid. Church, we're not afraid. He's coming back. Come, Lord Jesus. Man, when he comes back, at the moment that he comes back, I'm going to tell you what I don't want to be found. I don't want to be found playing around with the things he's freed me from. Did you hear that? When he comes back, I don't want to be found playing with the things he freed me from. And I don't want to be found frozen in fear because I bought the enemy's lies. I want to be wise. The Holy Spirit speaking in me that I may live in a way that people know the gospel, the good news of Jesus. Jesus loves you, and he died for you. And that evil and that darkness you feel in your heart for you that don't believe, which, by the way, I'm so glad you're joining us. It's why Jesus came, that if you'll just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. You see, I know some of you this week, you feel weak. You've struggled. I've struggled this week. And very honestly, up until Monday, I was doing pretty good. I, I do pretty good alone. But Monday, it all kind of came together. And I know some of you have had that same week, no electricity. And even today, I hear the thunder rumbling outside, and we're thinking, are we going to go through it again, right? See, so here's what I want to say to you. And I've had to remind myself of this week. I read this this last week. And I've reminded myself over and over again this week that his rule is universal, that he is the only sovereign, that cancer is not sovereign, divorce is not sovereign, difficulty is not sovereign, strife is not sovereign, temptation is not sovereign, despair is not sovereign. And listen to me, the COVID-19 is not sovereign. God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the only sovereign over all these things. He rules over them. His rule is universal. His reign is invincible. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the only capital K and the only capital L in history. There's no one whose reign even begins to match his. He's immortal. He's God alone has immortality. Think about it. He's above history we learned just a few months ago. He's beyond time. He is deathless. God lives. He dwells in the atmosphere of blinding holiness and purity and glory, man. He's unapproachable and inconceivable whom no one has seen or can ever see greater than anyone can even imagine or ever dream of. He's 
totally transcendent beyond us. To him be all honor and eternal dominion. His, he possesses all power and, and, and he deserves all praise. This is the God who is your life. What in the world can this world take life away from you? Nothing because he owns you. He's yours. You're his. Nothing can steal joy from you when God is your life. Nothing can rip hope away from you when he, this God is your life. Grab a hold of him today, church. I'm telling you, grab a hold of the life that he gives. Take hold of it. Grasp it. Experience it. It's yours. He's yours. We're his. He makes this a really, really good fight with him. I'm telling you. So let me leave you with two encouraging words this morning. You ready for this? Two things. This is a battle cry, church. So two things I want to say to you this morning. Number one, you are not alone in this fight of faith. You're not alone. And I know it feels that way. I know some of you, you're struggling with that. But listen to me. You're not alone in this world. Not one of us are engaged in a spiritual battle alone. We're all facing battles. We're all struggling on some level. I'm facing battles. We all face different battles all week. And we need one another. And this is where I want to encourage you. Because you see, I, I said this about three weeks ago. The Summit Heights was built for this. It's why we do small groups. It's why we've always done small groups. Because we're not based around a building. The church was never a building. The church is more than a chair. And so our small groups have continued to thrive and other people have continued to thrive because they have a small group that they're, they're encouraging each other and they're doing it wisely and distancing and all those things. But listen, it reminds us we're not alone in this. Small group is where you lock arms with brothers and sisters who know you, who know the battles you're going through, who you know the battles they're going through and you're sharing life with each other. You're walking through the battles together. You're spreading the gospel with one another. See, this battle was intended to be played out with brothers and sisters, not alone. The enemy wants to isolate you. The enemy wants to isolate you. If he can isolate you, then he can take you out or he can get you mad at the church or mad at the preacher and then cause that lifelong resentment because God didn't do what you thought he should do because the enemy has isolated you. We were not built to do this alone. Two are better than one, Ecclesiastes says for they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, the other one's there to help him up, but pity the man who falls and has no one there to help him up. We're built for this. And so let me say this to some of you, because I know some of you, if this has all been built for us, played out with brothers and sisters on the front line, locked arms, that we have a mission to accomplish, we're not alone in this. And if you find yourself alone in this, listen to me, look at me, I'm telling you, if you find yourself alone in this, we would love to connect you with a small group. And I want to say this, because this, this is so burden for me, is we have one of the best Celebrate Recoveries around. People call us all the time. And I know some of you guys are struggling. And this last Thursday night, we, have, we had Celebrate Recovery. This next Thursday night, we're going to be here for you. And I know some of you are scared to death, and you don't want to come because you're scared you're going to catch something. Can I just say this to you? Don't do this alone. We're going to take care of you and make, make sure you're safe. And so if you're struggling, don't do this alone. Don't buy the lie of the enemy that you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps and make it because it's never worked in the past. You're not alone. We want to help you. God wants to help you. And he, we're going to continue to figure out ways to connect people and still be under authority but accomplish the mission that God's called us to. So let me say a second thing to you, a second word of encouragement. This is good, and you need to hear this. The outcome of this spiritual battle, you ready for this? I've already said it. I'm going say it again. You ready for this? It's irreversible. The war has already been won. Yeah, I know it doesn't feel that way, does it? Last Monday, it sure didn't feel that way. Yeah, first world issues. <laughs> but the battle's already been won. That's the whole point of the communion table. You know that, don't you? 
the blood and the body of Jesus Christ and the one who has risen from the dead, man. That's the whole point, that God has taken the penalty of sin upon himself and he's risen from the grave. He's conquered sin and death. He conquered the enemy. We have a defeated foe, man, and he will be destroyed, guaranteed. 1 John 4, 4, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Amen? Amen. This transforms your mind, man, when you start believing this. When you take this in, the truth, the gospel, the good news, it changes our perspective. And so what that means is that we fight this good fight of faith. We're not trying to win it. Because we fight not for victory, not trying and striving. Listen to me, church. We're fighting from victory. We've already won. When you know you've already won, it's let's go get it. Amen? That changes everything. He conquered sin and death and the grave. And the evil one, that roaring lion, you know why he roars all the time? He ain't got no teeth. He ain't got no teeth. Because when Jesus rose from the grave, all of his teeth fell out. He can't, he'll gum you, but he ain't got any power over you. You're victorious. So listen, I know some of us are still struggling. I know some of you, very honestly, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ so that you'd be saved. You see, the difference between you and me and you've seen it in me. You've seen it in your mama. You saw it in your granddaddy. You maybe saw it in somebody you grew up with. Because we're at peace from a place of victory. And the darkness that you feel is why you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's why he came. So that you may be saved. Would you? Would you today? You can do it right where you sit. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And if you do that today, we would love, love, love to know. You can do it in the privacy of your living room and fill out that decision card that's going to be in your feed in just a moment. It's on our website. It's in the feed on YouTube. We would love to know and pray with you and help you take the next steps. Because listen, we are victors. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may you be encouraged this week and may you have a great week. I love you. Let's pray together and our band's gonna lead us out in one last song. Father, I love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your word that, God, this isn't new. This didn't take you by surprise. God, this, 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 you weren't scrambling to try to find a game plan. It's God, all along, we know we've been in a battle. We're soldiers. We're athletes. We're farmers and the mission of the gospel. So Lord, I pray for that one that's listening this morning. And very honestly, Lord, all that they've heard today, the enemy's still bombarding them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you would silence the voice of the enemy. And God, they would begin to hear that whisper of love of you. And God, they would begin to believe that you would give them faith to believe God, give them courage to reach out. And God, I pray for our Celebrate Recovery. For all those hurts, habits, and hang-ups in a season like this, the enemy's probing. God, give them courage. Give us courage to continue to reach out to people that can help us as we do this together. We lock arms and we walk in the battle together. So, Lord, I love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for holding off the rain and the weather, and I know there's many today that are going to be hit by that. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus you'd protect them. I love you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for my family, my church. And we ask it in that beautiful name, Jesus. Amen. Hey guys, welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. And if there's any decision you felt like God is leading you to make today, we would encourage you to 
uh, make that decision and to go online. There's a prayer tab on our website that you can go to. We'd love to pray for you. We would also love for you, if you accepted Christ today, to send us a text. We have a number at the bottom of the screen that you can text us the word accept if you accepted Christ. Or if you would like to know more about baptism, just shoot us a text with the word baptize to that number on the screen and we'll get to you, I promise you. Hey, have a great day and listen, if you're looking for a great church and you don't have a church home, come visit us one Sunday. We have two services, one nine, one at 11. We'd love to see you. Have a great week.